so yeah that's that's why i was excited to get you two both linked up into this chat because i, I do see a lot of similarities in, in, in how you both approach basketball yeah uh, honestly it feels like i'm like talking to my spirit animal ways really scholarships you know mm. you know in blue chips when What's good, bro? How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm good, bro. Good to see you in the flesh, my man. Oh, man. I've said this so many times to people, but I'm so bad with technology that if, if yeah. it wasn't for the lockdown here, I, I wouldn't be doing any of these chats. Bro, same here. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel better because I feel like I'm the only one, but. <laughs> nah, bro. You're not alone in this one, bro. I'm like, bro, what is this thing? I miss being down at the stadium. I miss like, you know, all that. Yeah. So I okay, hear they, they've both just come through now. I'll just add them to the chat if that's all good. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. G Money Galuli. What's up, what's Tyler. up? Tyler, hey. what's up young fella? Yo, hey brother. <laughs> So I'll do a little introduction. So this guy here, Joshua, Joshua, based in California. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out in Sacramento, Sacramento area. Um, awesome. Got to meet him back in the day, and uh, just blew me away with his um, his skills. <laughs> Joe Hammond, Joe um, Hammond's a great man. God bless him. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't have to try and guard you because I would have broken right, an problem. ankle or something. <laughs> Um, oh, and this guy here, Tyler, he's, uh, yeah. he's like the most popular person in Canterbury. He's like going to be a mere, he's going to like run our city one day, I think. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. That's very. He, he also is a baller. So he's also a baller um, and a coach. And this guy is um, Mr. Toby G Money Galuli. Asterix, That's I'm the only one that calls him G Money and he doesn't like G Money, but <laughs> <laughs> he's been hitting threes for a long time. So he ain't that. Joshua, do you remember Glenn Rice? Glenn Rice, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Laker, the bucket getter. G yeah. Money. 99 on, 99 on, uh, on NBA Live. Yeah. Yeah. G Money. And that's, that's, G Money. Uh, yeah, Toby was resistant. I, I still think he thinks it's a poor nickname, but I. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's, gro it's growing on me a little bit. You're the only one that calls me it though, so it's just like I only hear it like once a year. I use you money now. It's official. It's you money. You money. <laughs> I think I reference that sometimes, and I know that I'm talking about you, but other people are just like thinking I'm talking about someone else when I'm saying basketball stories about you dunking on Wellington College or whatever. And <laughs> different person. Um, yeah, some of those videos are, are lit too. Those are dope. Those highlights too. So I'll apologize, Toby, that um, I thought I had that footage of that dunk. Yeah. So Joshua, um, when I was coaching Toby when he was in high school, we were at the national tournament, which is in our country, like the big tournament. Mm -hmm. And um, Toby did this dunk that was like, it was, it's infamous. And we've, yeah. got this, we've got this photo and he's just above everybody. And I think I've seen that actually, bro. Okay. I think I've seen I think I've seen that. Yeah, you're legendary, bro. I know you. I yeah. recognize the name. I saw that's old boy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're I'm pretty sure we're friends on Facebook. I think so. so we're like, we, we go way back, obviously, you know. We're friends that's on what Facebook. I'm saying. We're, we're family, basically, bro. Yeah. <laughs> basically we're family. So who the hoops community. And um <laughs> so I, I got excited because Toby posted something about that uh that photo and I thought that he actually had the footage of it. And it turned out he didn't have the footage of it. We just have the photo. So I had to, I went on YouTube and become a bit of a stalker. And I found somebody from Wellington College who was posting some content back at that same year. And I messaged them and they said, yep, no problem. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get that to you. And then just radio silence just left me hanging. So I um, haven't received it. So it still might happen. I'm sure someone's going to have to have it. But um, I mean, I've got the video of it, but I don't have the actual, like I have a video of the video. Like I, I took it on like the, we got back to the hotel or whatever we were staying and me and Nate Louie 
were filming the little TV in our room <laughs> on my like Samsung S3 in 2016 <laughs> or something. And it's like that's why it's so grainy. <laughs> so I have I have I'll, I'll, send, I'll send it to you right now the actual the Ooh, video that I have. Got it. That'll be me soon. There goes that man. Damn. <laughs> I'm adding so, to the end of this video. I'm adding Toby Galuli's footage. Yes, of the yes, dunk. Yes, legendary. Yes, you need that. Um, I tell you what was cool about it is I was standing there like trying to coach, and then this was a pretty cool game for us because you know we don't get to we didn't get to play the North Island teams too often. Mm. And Toby, Toby did that dunk right, and everyone just lost it, and we all, <laughs> we celebrated. But then I looked down. Um, to the coach of the other team, and he was just standing there, like, yeah. He was just, yeah. Like, he was just nodding his head, like, yeah. yeah. I've never had that. Before. I knew, solid. Like, yeah. I knew, I knew it was. The, I knew it was a real, a real one from his response. So, yeah. legendary, bro. Legendary. Toby. And Toby's um, getting into coaching, but he's obviously one of the best basketball players we've got in Canterbury. Um, mm. and just killing it in general. In the um, States, it's just so much more complex. Um, mm. Mm. So, many, so many levels to it and so many states. Yeah. Whereas here, we're just on an island and we're all on the same page. So mm. Mm. it's just a bit of a different thing. So, yeah, so th th that's pretty much it. I'll just annoy you guys with a couple of questions. And then, um, but like I said, feel free to just, um, if any of you have any questions for each other, go for it. Dope, man. Dope. Cool. Um, Tyler, I saw you've been doing some some things for the community with during the lockdown. You were delivering some packages to like families. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. So um, with Crossover Coach, I um, have a contract with like a, a government agency, and um, I was one of the guys to got, got to get out of the house and deliver all of these packs these hygiene packs to these um, just whānau around Christchurch. Man, it's awesome. It's, it's really good. And it's actually nice to get out and about and, and see some faces, but from a distance. Yep. So I was pretty happy, man. It was really cool. It was really cool. Nice. And uh, on the coaching side, I'm, I'm in Stockburn, bro. So my office is literally next door. But um, the basketball hoop is literally behind my house. So <laughs> I just go out, do a couple of videos, um, I actually do training videos with some clients too, so it's actually quite nice to just um, try and get there. But it's such a different vibe, man. Like face to face mm. is so different. It's just so hard because like I'm literally like like this, <laughs> seeing if they're doing it right. It's, just, uh, it's a different vibe. So yeah, I'm trying yeah. to work with that, man. I'm trying to work with that. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about yourself, man? You got St. Thomas's, right? Yep. So I um so I was I was at Burnside obviously for quite a while. I think I think it was like eight or nine years. Um and had had a wee bit of a break. And then last year I helped out at St. Thomas's. I sort of did a little bit of mentoring and, and just sort of helping out a little bit. Uh, this year I wasn't doing any coaching at all and I was busy with some other projects and then things just kind of changed with them as far as how much work I had to put into them. So I found myself with some free time and then, yeah, St. Thomas hit me up and just asked me to come in and go all out and set up a basketball program there. Um, so I was really impressed with that and I had a relationship with those students from helping out a bit last year. So, um, yeah, I had a month before the lockdown to start working with those students and start trying to build our team. And, um, yeah, lots of young talent and they've got really, they obviously had a bit of a tough time um, Joshua, where they had three really, really good like national level players, mm. and they all went. They all got kind of uh, private schools offered them some scholarships. You know, mm. you know, in blue chips when rocked yeah, up. Believe it or not, I gotta watch. You haven't seen blue chips, bro. I've, I've seen every hoop movie in existence except for blue chips, bro. I know. Okay, bro. Okay. There's some homework. <laughs> There's some homework. Indeed, indeed. Um, yeah, so this school lost these three incredible players. Um, 
but it's I'm looking forward to the challenge. They've got like um they they're not even ranked top ten. So I love the idea of taking a group that's never been competitive and just, you know, attempting to sort of make that competitive and hopefully just have similar success to what we had at Burnside, um, mm. which I really miss and I'm really proud of that group. And so, um, and this is all this is all Christchurch you're talking about? All Christchurch, yep. Christchurch, yep. word. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, yeah man. Christchurch, man. Okay. And God bless Christ Christ Church. Man, how you guys doing out there, man? Oh, man. Good. I mean, Earthquake was like what five years ago? Something like that. I think it was about nine. Yeah, nine was it nine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had just left, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just, just fresh out of there when that happened. My wife was like, man, good thing you left. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just barely escaped that. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty <laughs> different. Do you remember when um we went to Kiwi too? That big facility with the pools and the basketball courts and all that. Do you remember that? I think so. I think so. All gone. No. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, it's yeah. Change Christchurch. Uh, um, crazy. Yeah, pretty pretty crazy stuff. But um Yeah, it's been a while. Oh man, I just I haven't talked to you in, in person, you know, in the flesh in a long time, so it was good to see you. Um, I gotta ask, I'm sorry guys, I haven't seen Joe Hammond in years, or talked to Joe Hammond in years, so I'm kind of tripping out. Um, you guys know the Irwood family? I know I know Joe, you know the Irwood family. How are, how are they, man? Are they all good? Everybody's good? Yeah. Everybody's they're, like, yeah, they're good. They're really good. And um, I tell you what, young Nick Irwood, who would have been a gangly um, young fella, like still learning how to make knuckle jumpers when you meet him. Yeah, he's a he's he runs a he's a uh, development officer, and he's the man. So he's um influencer. <laughs> he's like coaching the kids, and he's like he Hi. he's he played at a high level. He he played in the NBL. He he oh, got he? On the court, he got on the court for the Rama Jammers. Yep, yep. So oh, um man. he's yeah he's he's done really really well. And, and, and a top ten prems player, like he's he's right up there with the premier players, man. He's, he's a headache to, yeah, he's a headache, man. Yeah, that's tight, man. Yeah, he's good people, man. They deserve success, man. Good people, man. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, I've got to, I've got to, I, I'll try and pull Nick into one of these annoying chats that I can yeah. ask some people about. Yeah, for sure, man. But um, yeah, it's good. Every time I see that guy, he's he's um he's running a clinic or he's coaching, you know, like younger kids or you know, hollering <laughs> at some referees on the sideline or whatever he's doing. But he's um, it's cool to see him. He's doing yeah, and yeah, the Irwood, yeah. Shout out to the Irwood family. Actually, all of those Burnside cats, man, are, are still super dope. Like Ollie still is um Ollie Davies is still ripping it up. Yeah, and we already know what Toby's up to, so it's it's really cool. It's really cool. It's quite funny how that how Joe you created well not created but helped guide some products, mm-hmm. and um, now they're super super contributors, especially in that our like our premier comp. Josh, man, it's mm-hmm. really fun. It's really yeah. fun, and I think the young guys are starting to come in now. I coach like a I coach a team um, at Lincoln University, and these guys that we're coaching against, that we're playing against, is it's so nice. Like everyone's so close. You've got right. like four or five teams that are hella close, so you don't know what you're gonna get every week. Yeah. So it's really nice. Really it's nice. A lot of fun, man. Yeah, it's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's probably the closest the premier comp's been in like phew, I don't even know how long. Kind of still, man. Mm-hmm. Toby, you're still playing, yeah? Me? Toby, you're you're still playing? Yeah, yeah, I'm still still fully fully involved, but obviously not right now. We're inside, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just we were signed up to play for Rams again, and we were like a week out from mm. the season starting. So we just finished like two months of preseason, and um, we've been grinding away two a days for for mm. two months pretty much, and then you know it got all put on hold. So mm. it's kind of hard to. Um, you know, do all that work and then it just stops suddenly, you know, like you're just like, oh, you know, yeah. just used to waking up every morning and having six hours of basketball and then 
Mm. Now it's like, oh man, I don't know what to do. So yeah, hopefully it all gets up back, you know, pretty quick. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. exciting. But you know, right now it's just, yeah, it's pretty, pretty tough to see and talking to a lot of guys that, um, you know, we're supposed to be playing some pretty high level basketball right now. Um, mm. And they're kind of in the same boat. So yeah, it's tough, but got to keep the spirit going. Yep. 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 So you can do How it. How you man. doing over there in Cali, Josh? Man, Cali's interesting, bro. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm just grateful, man, that nobody in my family has been affected. None of my friends have been affected by this COVID thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so interesting because I'm a, I'm a hip hop guy. You know, I love hip hop, so I'm so I'm I'm in tune with everything that's happening, right? And I'm seeing like people pass away in the hip hop community, or people get really ill from it in the hip hop community. So for me, it's like it feels like family. You know, I'm just a fan. You know what I'm saying? So I'm mm. really conscious of it. So out here. It's like people got on gloves, some people got on masks, some people don't have on anything. Yeah. And it's just kind of really uncertain. Like you don't want to, uh, for me personally, I don't want to disrespect anybody and not have on a mask or not have on gloves because people, some people are losing loved ones to it. I'm out here in the yeah. streets trying to be really respectful of that. Yeah. So uh, me and my family, we're really kind of playing the background, like not really sure what to do. Like it's kind of weird. Um, mm -hmm. But but living situation, like we're really blessed. Like God bless us. We're getting enough food and money saved up to where we're navigating it without really being impressed by anything at all. You know what I mean? Like, so it's it's to be honest with you, it's kind of weird. I'm gonna go on a little rant for a second if that's all right, man. But uh, yeah. it's a, it's a little weird for me. Um, I started my master's program uh, at Grand Canyon University online in February, right? So. Um, so that that in itself has been an adjustment to working on that degree. And when this all hit, it's kind of like, all right, I get like a week off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get two weeks off. I'm in the house. I work on my classes. All right. I'm in the backyard with my son. We're working. I got an eight-year-old son. He's pretty nice. He's pretty talented. We're in the backyard working out, having fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, cool. I'll take another week. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, this training thing, you know, I've been in this uh, seven years now, uh, five years full time, just that's all I do. And, you know, I really love it and I really care about every kid, and every parent and every, so it's really serious to yeah. me to take it to heart, almost probably more than I should, what I'm learning now, to where it gets stressful. Like, dude, like so-and-so didn't play. And parents are paying me to make sure this kid plays. He needs to, I got to make sure he's up to par. And so anyway, so getting this break was like kind of a, a relief, but now it's been like a month. It's like almost uh, almost two months. So I'm just like, oh, <laughs> oh, things are kind of changing now. And so uh, with this whole Zoom thing, me and Joe were talking earlier with the technology. For me, it's like, man, I really don't want to be on a camera in front of a computer. You know what I'm saying? It's weird for me. Um, but which, to what you were saying, Tyler, like I'm kind of on that now to where I tried it with a couple kids. I said, okay, well, let me, instead of sitting in front of the camera and I'm holding the camera and you got your phone posted up, I sent him a workout. How about you do this workout, tape the workout, send the workout back to me. Then I'll review the workout and give you some notes on it. Kind of like a film study for them too, yeah. to where they can look at it and say, oh, my workout looks like this. This is how I look on tape. Because as you know, uh, your, you know, your film's not going to lie might look pretty you might feel pretty good but your your game film is going to tell the truth especially when you're trying to get mm -hmm. recruited you know from the high school level you send that film yeah, out to that's, a coach that's awesome. yeah that's spot on. yeah yeah you send that film out to a coach you might feel like it's good but it's like this isn't impressive okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking since i'm going to rant but no, I got, no, all, right. Okay. all right all right i can i can get going <laughs> all right so we ain't got, so I, I got we've got no plans tonight no i'm just saying. all right cool cool man yeah. so so i got one guy he uh he's actually pretty good and and he had a great season and i was there at a lot of his games because my wife was coaching at the same school this season and uh you know he was balling he was balling out and then uh put together his highlights and i was excited to see the highlights when i actually saw the highlights i was like dang bro this highlight tape not as exciting as it was in person. If you're trying to play the one, like these coaches are gonna look at this and say, oh, this is cool, you're all right, but it's not like wowing us. So, you know, mm. trying to use that for the, the kids that I'm working with now, getting them to look at that film and say, all right, you know, this, uh, this is how your film should look. Oh, this looks good. This is you getting it done and looking good. You know what I mean? So that's kind of my approach to it right now, but yeah, my man. trying to, trying to my man. figure it out. That's actually, a, a 
good thing to to think about is during this time they could actually be using that time to start making some good film. They've probably got so much tape going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, season hasn't started here yet, but mm -hmm. there's probably some really good quality tape that hasn't been touched yet. So that's a really good idea. Of just getting them to just yeah. even think about it. That's mm -hmm. a great idea. Agree. And that workout thing, man, I'm going to use that. I'm going to, I'm going to use that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, it's yeah. so much easier than Zoom, bro. Like, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was going to be a lot of work. I could see that, too. I was like, man, every hour, like, I mean, I do that. But with the camera, it's totally different, man. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, for real. Yeah. For real. But, you know, uh, some of the parents would ask me too, like, are you, can you come to one of our games and watch the game? But I can't come watch your game if I'm in the gym training. Um, so they can tape the games going forward. When we come out of this, you know, sooner than later, they can send me the film and I can review the film and use that as a great yep. opportunity. To yep. instead of just trying to fix this light thing on my, on my iPad, man. I accidentally dropped it and the screen protectors cracked. Oh, uh, that would be. <laughs> did you did you accidentally drop it, or did one of your students frustrate you so much he threw it? Oh man, <laughs> Lincoln! Like shout out to Lincoln though, but sometimes, man, I was <laughs> I was, that, I was that close, man. I was that close. But <laughs> I was actually thinking about going electronic, like legit. You know how guys use clipboards now um, on their iPads and that. I seem to go to electronic because I keep losing my whiteboard marker. Like I just keep losing it. And I had to buy a new whiteboard markers. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to have spares. End up finding tea at the bottom of my bag. <laughs> well, uh, there's some dope apps out there now. There's some really cool apps. Like um, even on FIBA, like you can um, look at how your plays are set and they actually run through it on the iPad. So you can hmm. say, okay, I want you to run this play. You press play. And they'll go, okay, I need to check where I'm going. Or you can just do it manually. But it's pretty interesting the way that tech's used in um in coaching now. Mm, and yeah. like Josh, like you probably you probably get that. Like yeah. for example, like home court. When mm -hmm. I first started out with them, they had like one dribble workout um and just shooting pretty much. And then mm -hmm. now it's like a huge mm -hmm. database of workout. It's, it's so dope, it's so good. No, that's fire. What kind of um? What are you using any apps at the moment, Toby, to do your any of your workouts? Well, we use Home Court. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't have a hoop where I'm at, so I'm in Queenstown right now. Um, to Christchurch, so um, it's kind of hard to you know, go do your ball handling workout, and yeah, I go to the gym here, so I can you know still use the weight room and stuff, but. You know, no, no hoop, and so you just gotta kind of make do with what I got. But definitely, home court was sweet because they made it free too, which I was stoked about. <laughs> um, jumped on there, um, and you know they they got some pretty cool stuff, and um, and we know our coach Mick Mick sends us through a whole bunch of stuff that he wants us to do, and um, he sends us a lot of um, you know film that we can work on, and um, you know I'm part of the Mainland Eagles page, um, so. They've done a really good job of like uh, they get all the kids that are involved in that program that to like post their workouts, mm -hmm. yeah. like on the page and stuff. And then um, the, for the coaches that are on there can go and and comment on the on the video and say you know like you know to work on different things. And so that's really cool to see. But mm. yeah, for me, it's just home court and then just holding on to a basketball pretty much and tapping it in my fingers and stuff like that. Just hoping that it comes back soon enough. Yeah, man. Toby, I know you. You're you're like going down to the local primary school trying to post up some kids at the. <laughs> at the I know you. <laughs> What's it like, man? Because I'm a huge fan of McDonough. Um, mm. Josh, there's a there's a head coach at the Rams, and he's uh been a part of the Boomers program, Australian Boomers program, and he's done a lot of big coaching. But what's it like working under someone like that, Topes? Mm. Uh, it's a whole different beast. Like, um, you know, he asks, you know, he just asks you so many, he plants so many seeds, you know, like in your brain that you have to try to figure out, you know, he's not really a coach that tells you exactly how to do something, you know, he, mm. he gives you, gives you ways of doing it and he, you know, lets you figure it out. And it's crazy. Like some of the stuff, like the drills we do, you know, what they correlate to on the court and you, there's no way in your head you're like, man, there's no way this drill 
equals, you know, this on the court. Mm. And then you go on the court and you're like, crap, like, this is from that drill we did. You know, that <laughs> defensive rotation was from that random ass drill we did at the start of practice. Mm. You're like, how does this do, you know? Awesome. Just really cool, man. And he's super personable. Like, he's not, you know, just turn up to training and, like, he's first at training, filling up the water bottles, you know, mm. wiping the floor, you know, everything like that. He's not just turn up and coach. He's, yeah, so it's pretty awesome, man. He was a breath of fresh air for sure. Um, and, I mean, you saw, if you That's watched the games awesome. last year, like, you know, that was such a fun team to play on. Mm. Um, just because, you know, the way he coached and let us have a whole bunch of freedom. Yeah. But yeah, he, yeah, he's definitely top tier for me. Um, he's up there with the Joe Hammonds in terms of just being like, you know, you had that relationship with the guys I built with Joe what five years, six years at Burnside, and then you know you get those you get those pretty cool people that you know pretty big impact. So yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, I was pretty yeah. happy when I when people started talking about you know the impact that he was having on the teams that he was coaching here. And then to see you reconnect with the Rams, I was, I was really excited about that. Um, just to see you getting, you know, into that sort of, in that camp and working with that group. And then when I saw you on the court, you looked like a different, you clearly leveled up. Like, I thought you looked pretty good when you first started getting on the court in the NBL. But then when I saw you last season, it was, it was different. You just looked like, you just, you just slid right in, uh, right in there and just looked like, you know, you could hold your own quite comfortably. So that was awesome for me to see, you know, just, you just took off. So, just Yeah, it's funny you say that. It's funny you say that, Joe, because, like, Toby will know this, like, and you'll know this too, Josh, is, like, professional players move differently. Mm. The way that they move, you'll see, yeah, this guy's, like, this guy's, this guy's the real deal. Mm. Yeah. Like, if you mm. see E, like, e, Ethan Rustbatch, move the way that he moves it's so professional clean fluid yep and i'm like yeah that, that's the pro if you see guys throwing like a overhand hook pass to the baseline kick i'm like yeah that <laughs> that, that dude that dude oh. can that dude can play it's a little mm. stuff you know it's a little stuff mm. anyone can shoot anyone can lay it up mm-hmm. and dunk it but it's the way that you move find yeah, find yourself in those situations i think it's awesome and the way that mick recruited those Australian players mm. so those guys moved in a whole different level uh, like, it's yeah. unreal it's really cool to see actually that the NBL is getting more Australian interest which is really cool to see because it sort of levels up our game you know yeah. what I mean it's dope yeah well um, his wife uh, now is it yeah. yeah yeah I so at the beginning of the season I decided to also take on a girls um, high school program um, which is new for me. And so I hit up a couple of coaches um, just to sort of get some advice about the difference between the boys and the girls game. Um, and Laurie sort of forwarded my email on to her now and she invited me to one of her trainings. Um, so I was really appreciative that, you know, they sort of welcomed me through just so I could sort of watch how they ran things. But just watching her run a training, I think it was maybe the under 15 and under 17 um, Canterbury or whatever they're calling that those teams uh, at the moment and man it was like um, it sort of blew my mind a little bit like it looked um, it just looked really efficient and like really mm-hmm. tough but in a good way it was yeah. like I mean, those kids are getting better like just from today's training they got a little bit better so um, yeah so pretty good we've, we've, we've gone through quite a few different coaches since you came to Christchurch, Joshua, like we've had mm. um, quite a few different people come through, and so was, the Rams became the Christchurch Cougars for a wee while, and then back to Canterbury Rams. So we've had quite a few different people through, um, but the current setup's looking really good, and, and some pretty cool feedback coming through. So it's good. Awesome. Awesome. So we're not quite mm. sure what that season's going to look like here. We're still waiting to hear what they do with that. So it'll be interesting to see what they do, but I'm feeling. I'm feeling pretty optimistic, you know, we're, with our stats keep on coming out daily. In the last two days, we haven't had any cases. Um, so we're, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the basketball season here will start. Hopefully, we get a season here. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, Josh, what's, what's, what, 
um, skills training stuff are you doing over in Sacktown? Are you doing it through your business? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I run a company uh, called Follow Through Athletics, um, and we're we're uh, vendors for a company called California Family Fitness up here in Sacramento. Uh, so we we basically train out of their facilities and pay them like a small percentage. We've got a pretty good relationship, so have a gym, you know, in itself is a blessing, you know. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, so whoever comes through, whoever comes through, we work with them. I don't do a lot of promoting uh, per se, you know what I mean? I don't really put myself out there. Um, but people come, people come to word of mouth. We work with uh, all ages, sort of the babies, you know what I mean? <laughs> Five-year-olds to the, to the pro guys, you know what I mean? Like whoever comes through, they come through, we give them their work and we step on their way. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell, man. My thing is though, is cool. dude, yeah, my thing is, dude, I just, you know, I'm obsessive about this stuff. Like, I, like, I really care, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was kind of my thing since day one. When I put in, like, I tell every parent and every kid, like, like I'm going to rock with you. <laughs> like, if you want to start varsity as a freshman, we're going to we're gonna make that happen. Like, we're going to make it happen. And so I think I think the challenge for me is I, I try to put too much of myself into it. Like, you can't do it no matter how good you are as a coach or a trainer, like you can't do it for them. You can give them everything and every tool and every opportunity, but it gets to a mm. point to where it's like, all right, that's a hard thing for me to let go of it. Cause I'm like, oh, I want to see you win. You're going to win. I can do it. I'm going to help you win. But some, sometimes it's just like, you know what I'm saying it's just not going to work for you. <laughs> and it's like, I gotta yeah, it out. Man. some people just, some people don't. Yeah. 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 It's just not going to work for you. Like, you know, and I think one thing I'm learning too, outside of just winning as a coach, that's that's the win for me, right? Is the kid getting better, reaching the goals. More so than the win, it's like, all right, if you're not going to become a really good basketball, how can we help you become a better person? You know what I mean? How can we help you in life? And if that's if that's happening, and we're seeing your attitude get better, and you're you know doing better in areas like that, then we can count as success. And I think that's going to be more of my new pivot going forward is less how good are you becoming and more so you know what i mean like and the thing is dude like in, in my situation it's really competitive yeah competitive yeah like to the point to where like i'm a believer like i love god and you know jesus christ and all, and all that stuff. so i try to live by that motto of being a really good person and doing things biblically and biblically and ethically right well right I, gotta, now, I, gotta, I gotta say it's intentional that I got, I linked you two up because I see so many similarities in Tyler's journey as a coach and what he does compared to what I've seen you go through and where you're at now. Uh, you, you two, to me, I, I think are, are quite similar. Um, mm. You know how you co how you coach, but also um, just being like, um, you know, looking at looking at basketball, the big picture, and you mm. know, actually genuinely caring about people, and you know. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I was excited to get you two both linked up into this chat because I, I do see a lot of similarities in, in, in how you both approach basketball. That's yeah, dope. honestly, it feels like I'm like talking to my spirit animal. It's really <laughs> 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 actually, anyways, man, it's really nice. I was um I was actually talking to the New Zealand basketball head of high performance, um, LK, and he told me that there are 72 individual skills trainers in New Zealand. Wow. Now, I know. And I only know of wow. five. Wow. Now, there's only three skills trainers in the South Island, like, you know, ones that have actually created a, a company or a entity. Mm -hmm. um, that means the North Island is overcrowded. Yeah. Mm. So there's one, of, there's one in Southland, there's one in Nelson, and he's actually playing NBL right now. Um, and there's D. A, yeah, big Sammy D. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, so those are the ones that I know of, but there, there will be other ones, you know, but um, the social media game probably hasn't kicked off as hard yet. But I've hey, definitely don't, noticed. Don't get me I'll started, say, coach. Don't get me started on these people <laughs> that are like giving themselves names and starting up these Instagram pages <laughs> and talking about, oh. This <laughs> 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 like, oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. There's no proof. There's no proof in that pudding. There's none. There's no proof yeah. in that pudding. Uh, yeah. Do you know oh, what's? Okay, yeah. can, can I say something? 
I'll probably edit this out because it's controversial. But, and what they're charging kids, you know, they should probably come in at a more entry rate than charging these kids premium money, um, you know, versus give, sending those students towards Tyler or people that will actually help them. Um, man, it's, I'm trying to be um, less um, honest. Like, I'm kind of brutally honest about that stuff, but I'm trying to be, you know, shaking people's hands and high fiving <laughs> everybody. But it's kind of hard to watch, you know? It's kind of hard to, yeah. So, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm done with my, that. No, I feel you, man. Yeah. I feel, actually, no. I actually remember, yeah, there is one more. There is one more in Canterbury. I just thought about, thought about him. My man. But um, it's really interesting the way that things happen. And one thing I'm noticing a lot is skills trainers, relationships to the associations. Like, it's really hard for some trainers, like, and I'm not going to name associations, but it's not ours, to create that relationship, a really nice relationship with, the association because they think that it's taking out of their pot or who knows i have no mm. idea man but mm. there's so much politics and basketball nowadays that it gets yeah. sort of sickening and we're really lucky in canterbury that we've got like some really awesome people you know in office like the lorries and the james listenmans and it's just it's just awesome the marty's it's just really cool just to have those kind of people you need the enablers otherwise you know nothing's going to work yeah, and the big thing that I've noticed, def, def, especially in my business, is <clears throat> I just don't want to. I'm not here to create enemies. Like, I, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I'll do me, you do you, and that's one of the big things. Like, and and also I might must add though, I can't throw shade for the next thirty days because I'm doing Ramadan, bro. I'm fasting, so <laughs> it's one of my rules. I can't throw shade, can't swear, can't shout. So I'm gonna be Mr. Nice Guy for the next thirty days. <laughs> But it's really, it's really, it's really nice to hear that from you, Jay. Because it's, it's really, really nice. And that was one of the reasons why I actually started like crossover coaches. I saw a gap that it needed to be filled. Yeah. And now it's filled, but now I'm pretty well established. So, um, and if I'm, if I'm honest, it's a big shout out to the Downers because they've got. They're awesome people. They're doing great things. They just there's not a bad word I can say about Canary Basketball Man. They just everything. They just hands down is just awesome. Mm-hmm. You know that's just the way it goes, and we're really lucky. I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know. You know, we sound like the dark side. We might have to charge top dollar soon, so we'll see. We're like a yin yang right now. You're all positivity, and I'm like throwing shade at people. <laughs> well, you're, Mr. you're Mr. Controversial though, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I dig it. I dig it. You need that. You need that. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a good talk, would it? Well, I never have to politic because I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to climb up any ranks to anybody. I've got, I always have my program, and I'm just honest. So if I see something that other people are thinking, and behind, you know, people yeah. constantly agreeing with me, and people will actually nine times out of ten bring it up to me if there's something people, you know, have an issue with. But I'll just say it because I don't really, I'm just honest about it. So. Um, now that I'm getting a little bit older, I'm going to try and be a bit. <laughs> yeah, I dig that, bro. <laughs> I got I, I need to fast for thirty days. I dig that, and don't get me wrong. I did. I did have my. Don't get me wrong. I did have my. Uh, my tough times, you know, especially when I first started establishing myself. Like, there were some people that were against what I was up to. Um, especially a guy, you know, I, I was from Canterbury. I played for Canterbury, but I moved to Otago did my sports science and then came back out of nowhere I popped open this this thing you know I you know it was just one of those things but I think one thing that a lot of the parents are understanding and a lot of the players are understanding that I'm in it for them I'm not in it for anyone else I'm not in it for clout I'm not you know I I don't go slapping people's names up on my on my social media you know Ehaia is probably my only guy but I didn't make Ehaia Ehaia made Ehaia and that's one thing that I really want to tell other skills trainers is you can't claim cats you know you can't yeah. you know you, you, you can help them but if i'm honest i didn't make you hire you hire made me if you get yeah. if you get guys like that guys that are working real hard um josh just a quick heads up the hire is like one of my um one of the best players that actually had the privilege of coaching um 
He was undersized guard. He, he started in the Canterbury under 13 B team. He ended up being a three time South Island champ for small schools and two time finalist for national competitions. Like he scored like 53 in a game. He scored a 60 point game. This guy was lit. And he was only like mm. five foot 10, right? But the thing is, he like just kept asking questions, like question, question, question. What is it? What is it? Um, he'll turn up to any workout, no matter if it's with like 14 year olds or if it's with adults, he'll turn up to every workout. Mm. He would work like eight hours a week at least by himself. So mm. you probably would have worked with him before. He worked with Ethan Rustbatch quite a lot. Um, Marcus Whippy actually did a lot, a lot of work with him. So, you know, when you get guys like that, you're like, you don't make them, they make you. Mm. And he actually turned me into sort of what a gentleman mm. should look like. Like he's been raised by great parents. They were so supportive. Mm. Oh man, I was, I've got nothing but nice things to say about that dude. But mm. it's the thing with a lot of skills trainers. And you'll see that, we see that in New Zealand quite a lot. Like they'll post up some D1 level name and be like, yeah, that's mm. my guy. I made him. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's all me. And I'm thinking, like, who do you think you are, bro? Like, legit, who do you think you are? But then you have another situation, like, for example, the ones that grind, like the Joe Hammonds, the Paul Connors, to be honest. Paul Connor from Cashmere, he worked with, like, Tom Webley. And sorry, Josh, I'm sorry, these names you don't know about. No, it's Tom good. Webley, he worked right. with Oki. He worked with all these cats. From since they were year nine. Like, that's five years of just grinding with these guys. Mm. You know, mm. being there through thick and thin, taking them out for dinners, but driving them to games, coaching them mm. like two games a week for five years is a lot of games. That's more than like 200 games, you know, that Paul was coached with those guys. So, wow. you know, you gotta, you gotta thank the, gr the guys that grind it out. You know, like a, a trainer could be with them for three hours a week, but it's, and like you said, Josh, mm -hmm. it's about what, what they do in, with their own time. What do they mm -hmm. do with the information that you give them? What do they do with the feedback? And to be honest, Toby, you're actually the next one on the list. Because you remind me of a professional, bro. Like, legit. You're like an absolute pro. You know what you need mm -hmm. to get. You're goal-oriented. You know what you want. And then <laughs> you just gotta, you just got to ride the wave, bro, because you're actually going to get there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, this is a thing. Like, like I've never had a skills coach. Mm. like period like, every, like I've never you know I've had head coaches and and stuff like that but I've never had someone where it's just like specific skill training you know like we had I had Joe for for five years and I learned more probably about being a person a good person than you know as well as you know how to be a good basketball player and then you know I went over, over to the states and had two different coaches over there and you know played JTBs and you know, went to world champs and had Daryl Cartwright, who was, you know, another incredible coach. Um, you know, went to the Giants and had Jamie Perlman and now I got Mick and I've had Mark Dickel. Like I've had all these different um yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. coaches and they and they they all coach different. Yeah. None of mm -hmm. them coach the same. Like every single person coached a completely different style. Um, you know, like whether it be fully team focus or like um X's and O's you know, like, um, you know, no one was the same. And, and so like, I, I had all these different voices, you know, I go from six months of you have to do this and then six months mm -hmm. of you have to mm -hmm. do it like this. And then now it's like, okay, do it like this. Mm -hmm. So like, you just got to take little bits of, of every single one and, and figure out what works best for you. And I, I think, you know, there's so many ben benefits of having a skills trainer, especially for young kids who are on that cusp of, you know, quitting basketball and doing something else and having someone believe in them and, you know, text them every day and be like, hey, man, like, work out to that four. How you doing? Keep them on track. And, you know, I think you get those guys that need that. And then now if I, you know, I've text Tyler, what, four or five times saying, bro, let's work out, let's work out. And we've always been trying to figure it out and it just never worked out. But, like, you know, I'd, I'd benefit from yeah. it now. But there's, there's so many benefits from it. And it's so cool to see, like, how many kids – probably like that you work with if you hadn't worked with them they wouldn't be playing basketball mm. you know what i mean like and i was trained like i've been with ehi and i remember seeing him i think he was like year nine or ten so he's like two or three years younger than me and that dude couldn't 
you know, it was just a 5'10 kid from, he went to Hillmorton. And like, now I train with him and with Pete Van Hassett at one of those scrimmage and he was just giving out buckets. Mm. And it was just like, I was like, holy crap. And I seen all the yep. videos of you posting, like the posts of him doing all these ball handling drills. And I was like, damn, that's where the work came from. So I think like everyone's different. Some people need a skills trainer. Some people need a yeah, a, a, a free end. Don't talk about the way he moves, eh? Yeah. So he's so quick. He'd be so good at touch rugby. He would be elite at touch rugby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Toby, you know what? You just made a really good point for me, man. Um, you know, I never went to any camps. Right? I never had a trainer either growing up. Never had anybody work with me and give me any drills or anything like that. It was just like mm-hmm. on the street, working on your game, watching TV, like I'm gonna take that move and take that move. And you just wanted it so much, you just got better, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. For me, man, you know, training came about because somebody asked me to work with their son. That's how it all started. Can you work with my son? Yeah, I'll work with him, all right, you know? And then somebody else came along and then somebody else came along. And then he, and then his parents suggested I do it full time as a profession and I looked it up like, oh, I could actually do that. Oh, people do that. Well, let me see if I can do it. That's how it all started, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right. But I never, I never, um, I never considered doing camps. Somebody presented the idea of me doing camps and clinics, right? Like camps and clinics is where you're gonna make your money at, yada yada yada. And yeah, I was just like, yeah. no, I don't, I don't even understand that at all. Like, why am I doing a camp? Or like, I, you can't get better if there's 150 kids and I'm trying to yell at 150 and I can't see what everybody's doing. They're doing a mass. Like, I want to be able to really detail it. But what you're saying right now is like, boom, light bulb. Everybody's not going to go see a trainer and train every other day. Some people really need to come and get like, oh, give me that move. Give me that drill. Give me that. And I'm going to take that drill and go crazy. Yeah. So with my reluctancy to do camps, I might be missing out on helping that one kid who maybe can't afford to train. Thank you, Toby. That one kid who might just pay for that one camp, save up all year for that camp and get all this knowledge. And I'll see you next year. Toby, thank you. Hi, Bo. Appreciate you. So oh, man. man. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. And it's funny too, though, like, um, I don't know if you, when you sort of come up, as a, especially as a teenager, it's funny how you can hear the same message from different people, but every now and then somebody will say something, like a coach will say something, and it will just, it will be the motivation mm-hmm. that you need, or it will light that fire that you need, and it can be unexpected, or you might have heard that message from other people, but just... For whatever it's weird how you can get motivated and inspired so um i could definitely see the benefit in you know you talking to a group of people and you know reaching people that way and it, and some of those kids uh, the environment that they're training in like if it's their school team or whatever some of them are quite negative or some of them aren't actually giving them that confidence so um i could see the benefit of that for sure yeah hey um mm, mm. I gotta, I gotta, there's, I gotta, there's one uh, argument sorry you go Sorry, bro. There was there was one argument that a lot of people had was, um, you know, a lot of the old school coaches would say, "Why do you need a skills trainer? We never had one." Yeah. Well, then the mm. the argument that actually I heard another skills trainer say is, "Well, then why do you need a golf coach? Why do you need a tennis coach? You know, it's to work on, it's to work on those micro skills, to work on those macro skills to make sure that you perform better. Like it's it's as easy as that." Hmm. Well, so you go to a team training and like how many team practices do you go to where you're learning a brand new you know individual personal skill you know like you're just like your team trainings are for your team it's for your team to get better and you know to take your team to the next level but you know as an individual you still need to continue to get better and you can't you know it's hard to to get better as an individual um you know certain skills and like really find like pinpoint stuff in a two-hour team practice where you know like you're you're doing indiana drill and running through the plays and scrimmaging like you need that extra five hours ten hours a week of you know working on really really minute you know one dribble pull up you know different little things that you know actually will take you to the next level because the team trainings are great and you have to have them and you know that's what it's about but as an individual you still got to continue to get better so you got to find that way, whether it's with a skills coach, whether you sit on YouTube and download a whole mm-hmm. bunch of, you know, through handling Michael Jordan clips, whatever you need, and then go out into the backyard and practice them. But you just got to find that balance of, you know, how do I get myself better with, if I want to pay for a skills coach or if I want to, you know, do it myself or do it with a buddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Back in my day, 
um, okay. we didn't have that option. <laughs> so some of us wanted that extra work, but or, or like to be able to work with other coaches, but we didn't really have that option. Then when really, you know, Tyler's um, available in Christchurch for us to be able to go and improve and you know uh, learn. We we only had our high school coach, uh, some of us. So it's pretty cool now that options there. But hey, um, Toby. Um, if you don't like what I'm about to say, I can edit it out. But um, while you're talking, I just keep there's this one image in my mind, and I think of this quite a bit because I, I hear I hear about I hear about you a lot, and um, a lot of people give me like um, props for like you know having you come through our program and stuff like that. But um, there's this one thing that keeps standing out, and I, I got to just remind you. I don't know if you remember this, um, Tyler. I don't know. If, I don't know if people know this, but um, when I met Toby as a young, young, young man, he was in our under 17 B team. And his coach told me that he didn't want, he, he was having issues with Toby and he didn't know if um, he wanted him in the team anymore. Like he was talking about, <laughs> he, was, he was talking about, he was talking about him. And um, the way that he described him though, he was, you know, he said he's, he's strong and he, He's, uh, he's got this attitude though, he, you know. <clears throat> and so I invited, so Toby was about to get cut from the under 17 B team. And um, I, I invited him along to our senior training. Oh yeah, what's the, oh, yeah sorry, just looking at Tyler's image there. Um, and Toby, I don't, do you remember that training? Yeah. You do? I remember it, yeah. So I thought, yeah. <laughs> So Toby came in and I, I, I love this kind of um, kid that will come through and you can tell they really want it by just the way that they're training. And every time Toby would take a shot, you could see that he loved shooting. Like he loved shooting threes. Um, he couldn't shoot a lick either. I could not shoot a lick. He, he wasn't making his shots, but after every shot, he'd quickly look at me and see if I was watching. And um, But he was hustling so hard. And all, all I recognized in him was, one, this kid loves basketball, and two, he just really wants it. And that, I remember thinking, this kid's got like, because I like that kind of player that just works his butt off, and you know, he just he's serious about it. And so it's amazing. So on the spot, I was like, dude, you're in our senior squad. Like, come along mm. on Tuesday night, whatever it was. And you know, the rest is history. Toby just put in that work, but it's just amazing like when you think about different coaches and, and different spots where some people could have gone if they don't have access to skills coaches or like extra sessions or workouts or whatever um if i didn't link up with toby on that night and in, in the mm. cross gym i remember so vividly um you know who, who knows what would have happened to toby g money galuli but um one of my like every time i see anything toby a toby galuli poster on the wall or whatever just bigger smiles from me, you know. Just, <laughs> awesome. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's sweet. But, yeah. I could, Even, probably, I could probably talk for about three hours on Toby Galuli's stories, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> I'll try and limit them. The swagger of the man, eh? The swag. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, sorry, just off topic a little bit, but did you see that game that I posted, Toby, when we played um, Shirley Boys? Yeah, yeah, I watched that. Man, we did, film, I, film doesn't lie, right? Oh my god! <laughs> I, that, yeah. that was my only ever technical foul as a coach against the young Brad Clive in that game. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think he, I think he called you for a charge, and I was standing at halfway with my hands on my face, and I should have got ticked up. Someone should have oh. actually thrown a punch at me. I think I had so, <laughs> such a bad attitude, but um. Yeah, I, I was chatting to Brad Clive and I had to bring that up to him the other day. <laughs> oh, I love me some Braddles, eh? He Thank hates you. this, but I, I call him Braddles all the time on court. <laughs> Braddles? He's like, don't call me. Yeah, he's like, don't call me there, I'll tick you. <laughs> uh, I just keep calling him Braddles because he can't do anything about it. Because he, I don't know why, but for some reason he loves riffing our games. I think it's because it's so fast. He just, he's always at a to play like riffing my games. I'm like, come on, Bradles, I know you love this. I know, you're all about it, mate. You're all about it. <laughs> and he's got this like, he had this like small man syndrome for a bit now. Shout out to Brad. Yo, then, then he's got small. Yeah, yeah. Oh my big, goodness. Big chest Brad. Big chest Brad now. Oh my. Uh. Yeah. 
He did a lot of push-ups or something. I don't know what it was. He's put a little oomph in something, bro. Like, he's looking, you're looking good, Brad. I'm going to Brad, you're looking good, brother. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, uh, Joshua, how do I get one of those follow-through uh, hoodies, man? Uh, send, me, send me your address, bro. I'll, I'll work it out for you. What size you wear, man? <laughs> what, size, what size you need? You know what I mean? What size you Hey, you know, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do a swap, bro. I need one of those train heist joints, bro. I need a train heist hoodie, bro. Got you. Thing, yo, that was the illest thing I ever saw in my life, bro, was the train heist, bro. You guys know about the train heist, Toby? And up to, Uptown was the the king. Oh, bro. Bro, train heist, bro. Like, he, it was a bad situation. You know, so he That's got guy and he flipped it. He flipped it to the illest. It was yeah. the illest thing I ever saw, bro. I was like, yo, the train heist. It just sounds so dope. Yeah, you know cool. what I mean? It was dope, Joe. Yeah. I, was, um, I, was, I was in my retail store, right, at the time, and I closed yeah. the store down, and I turned all the lights off, and I went out the back, and I was so devastated about that situation that I remember lying, it was like a hard kind of marble floor, and I remember lying down on the ground in the darkness, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to cop an owl on this. There's no way I'm going to cop an owl. Mm. Like, no, I, couldn't, I can't have it. And so I came up with that idea, and then I messaged my designer and he came up with it and I put it out that night, the design, and I messaged everybody I knew. And man, yeah. I just sold t-shirts and hoodies for days. Like, man. Um, it, so I turned it into a positive. That. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That's the illest, bro. That's the story, man. Back full but, time, bro. You should bring it back full time, bro. Just brand it, bro. Train heist all day. It's the illest, bro. The train heist, bro. Come on. <laughs> the illest thing ever, bro. I was like, I was like, yo. I hope this thing never goes away at the train heights. What, what, was that like five years ago too? Don't say 10 because that's too long, bro. No, it was probably, yeah, I'll probably say about five years ago, probably. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's in my brain. It's, in, it's still actually in my brain. It's the illest thing ever, bro. It's like a pair of Jordans or something. You know what I'm saying? The train heights, bro. Man, I appreciate it. Up. Even Uptown was like, hype beast city. I was like, I was like Toby's age and I just saw it in every club, man. Yeah, yeah. Uptown, yeah, uptown. Uptown was everywhere, bro. Everywhere. Oh. Mm. 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 Easiest shit to the house, man. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get a package to your house for the fam. Yeah. Josh, do you work with any other coaches in, in LA? I mean, um, in Cali? No, nah, you know what? You mean as far as like trainers or high school coaches? Both coaches in general. Both. Uh, I mean, I, I know of some coaches. You know what I mean. And I'm I'm associates with coaches and uh, know some people in different places. But no, I don't really work with anybody per se. You know what I mean. Like as far as like yeah, yeah. Uh, business, would you say? Oh no, it's like as far. Thing. Oh, like as far as like the business side of things, man. Like the business side of things is really tricky for me. Um, and that's one thing that's challenging because I can help people in certain ways but I try to stick to keeping it one lane do you know what I mean like I yeah. just want to work with kids and players and just and focus on that ability um so if you send somebody to me hey that's what I'm going to do work them out and it's real square um you know what I mean like I don't want to build any what's the word uh uh word man I want to be able to work with everybody you know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah, don't want to yeah, be yeah. like, oh, I only train your school. Yeah, like somebody brought that to me uh, a couple weeks ago. Maybe you should start partnering with schools and training this. If I train this school in this league and I'm working with them all the time, but then I can't work with, you know, this school. Yeah. And I pledge allegiance and I'm in a contract with you over here. So it's like um, here and there, I'll work with a couple of different programs, you know what I'm saying, different places, but I try to just keep it and not so much a partnership. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's smart. Man. That's just me. Yeah, that's just me though, man. I just I'm really worried about this business thing. I gotta kind of like relook at it and try to make better sense of it because I really don't like the business side of this stuff. I really don't. Like, I really, really don't. Um, because it, it's tricky. It's really tricky and really fishy on on who you're working with and, and you know yeah. the bridges yeah. you can burn and uh, I don't know if I want to yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I went to I went to um I went to Kelly uh, last. I mean, was it October? Mm -hmm. And I went. I went with my wife, and um, I told her that two weeks of it's got to be work. And uh, she goes, "Okay, you're you're only here once, so like 
I'll let it, I'll let, I'll let you off. I was like, dope. So yeah. I Googled skills trainers, LA, and then I Googled skills trainers, California. And I already knew that I was going to go to the Mamba Academy. But mm. there was other ones like Jordan Lawley I wanted to work with. Like I wanted to see what he's got for me and all yeah. of these other guys. But Jordan wasn't free. And um, so I got like these three other skills trainers. And I've got to be honest, I worked out mm. there and I was like, how do you guys have jobs? Like how? Some of these guys are hella like, unprofessional. Like they come with their shoes untied and they look like mm. they just got out of bed. They they're like, "Oh, you got a basketball? Mm. You got a basketball for me?" And I'm like, mm. oh, <laughs> "Come on, man! I came from New Zealand. Like, I, yeah. I didn't bring a basketball." Yeah. But then, um, went to Marlborough Academy and worked with um, uh, Javale McGee's trainer. Mm. And the way that he did his um, workouts was really interesting too just based on the structure because coming mm. from a personal training background, I needed like, I always need structure. So it'll be like a set. I'll set my workout out according to what the player wants for us. So for example, mm-hmm. I do prehab. So get the joints ready, warm up. And then I'd put up 250 to 275 shots. And it depends mm-hmm. on what position they play, what their preferences are. But mm. no matter, no matter what, it'll be between 250 to 275. And then it'll take, take them through three moves of the day, which is like, uh, it might be downhill moves, triple threat moves, depending on what position they are again. And then warm mm. down, stretch, done. And then we just recap. For these, some of these trainers, I was like, they're like, oh, what you want to do today? And I, that's cool. That's fine. Because, you know, mm-hmm. first time I come from New Zealand, that's cool. I'm like, okay, yeah, I just want to work on, you know, um, rah, rah, rah. I just want to see what you got for me so I can take it home and mm. see what it's like. Two of these guys were like, okay, uh, 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 okay, uh, and I was like, oh mm. man, I don't know, I don't know how this guy, I'm paying top dollar for this, yeah. you know, cause I still pay it obviously. Mm. So for two of the trainers, they were a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars American. Per hour? And yeah, per hour. Wow. And the Mambo and Academy it- was one was 150. For the hour, yeah. Tell me about that. See, tell, uh, <laughs> tell me about the one hundred dollar guy. Tell me about the one hundred dollar guy so and what he we, did for one hundred dollars, man. So we're I need I need to up my rates. Yeah, no, we're in, <laughs> for real. I his name too. I don't know. I got to get paid, bro. Anyway, but, but um, I hit him up, and it was just through a, my American SIM card, and he took me to a. You, you guys call them rec centers? Yeah. So he took me, to a, took me to a rec center and he booked out a half court. And then he said, okay, it'll be $100. So the session pretty much looked like him going, uh, for like 20 minutes. And I was thinking, man, this guy's like, this guy's going to kill That's me. That's crazy. And I asked, I was like, yo, how'd you start out? And he goes, well, I started training like between, I started training like five and 10 year olds. And then I worked up, I worked my way up to like JV and then I've said, and then he's like, oh, now I've got like a couple of NAIA guys on my book. And I'm like, how do you go from uh, five-year-olds to NAIA within the space of like one or two years? Mm -hmm. I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, did you play? And he goes, yeah, I played college, played college. Um, And he said, I played college locally. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I was like, dope, this is going to be a mean workout. Look, (laughs) you know, hundred bucks, dope. And uh, so next minute, next minute, I was like, I was there, I was putting my shoes on and stuff. And he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, oh, yeah, man, um, I just want to work on a couple of downhill moves, see what you got for me. I'd love to take some of the info that you got for me and take it home. And some of the Mm -hmm. stuff, drills that you guys do in America that, you know, that I'd love to take home with me. Mm. And this is like the bane of my existence. This is, this kills me is when mm. trainers try and imitate NBA players. Mm. So if, but I can understand some moves, like some moves are amazing. But if you're mm. telling a guy to do like Luka Doncic step backs with a spin move, <laughs> Yo. And with, uh, but between, Yo. between the legs, here's he, you know, like, come on, man. Like in New awesome. Zealand, you have two dribble moves and you're, that's it. Like, mm. and that's a big difference that I've noticed between America 
and New mm. Zealand is New mm. Zealand are very much like the European game where we're methodical and logical because mm. we don't have the athleticism to back it up. But if you've got a skills trainer who looks at me, and to be honest, bro, I'm not a small dude. Mm. He, he looks at me and he's getting me to do like Luka Doncic step backs with a mm. James Harden spin move, Euro step, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. offhand layup. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I can't take any of that home. Mm-hmm. So honestly, bro, the whole time he gave me five NBA moves and we put up about a yeah. hundred jump shots and we did a warm up for 15 minutes. And I was like, man, this guy's killing me right now. This guy's killing me. Yeah. But then I went to the Marlboro Academy trainer, bro. Mm-hmm. And um, his name was uh, D Pinkard. I don't know if you heard about him, bro. But, what was his um, name? D Pinkard. Or Pinkard. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he, was, he was a nice dude, real nice dude, mm-hmm. real laid back. Um, and he played, he played college too, as they all do. And mm. I asked him what he was like. And he said that he played, um, he coached like a high school girls team. And then just like you, um, he said, one of the girls asked if I could train them. Mm-hmm. And then he worked his way from there to NBA players. Like that last, um, that last camp that had like Kyrie and PG and all of that. He was mm-hmm. there training with them and Kobe. He was there, like he was right in the middle of it. And then JaVale McGee picked him up. He said, yeah, come train me. Mm. So I had him, man. And again, it was different to my workouts, the way that they're structured. But he really looked at the little stuff. Because to be honest, bro, we only, I only did jump shots. Like I was only shooting threes the whole hour. But mm. the stuff that I got out of that hour was mm-hmm. more valuable than any move I could ever learn or any work that I could ever do. He was teaching me, um, we we're going back to the basics. I'm talking basics. Like I'm talking like mm-hmm. um, hizzies. I'm talking jab steps. Mm-hmm. He says, you're jabbing wrong. And I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. he was like, let me show you how to jab. Mm-hmm. Let me show you how to jab. Mm-hmm. And he showed me where to put the ball on the outside of my knee. He showed me all of yeah. these things that I've yeah, never, yeah. ever thought about. And I was mm. like, man, this guy has like really opened my eyes up to what a skills trainer in the NBA level will look like. Mm. He's like, mm. he's like, you, do you think that I teach Kyrie Irving new moves? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> right. He goes, hell no. Kyrie's like the most elite of all ball handlers. But one thing I do try to notice is the little stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, on mm-hmm. on because he says now the game works in inches, and and when it gets to NBA, it works in millimeters, works in centimeters, mm-hmm. you know, it, it works in fingernails, you know, mm-hmm. it could mean a jump shot or not a jump shot. And I'm like, man, mm-hmm. you, I've got so far to go, bro. Like I'm legit thinking I've got, just thinking about this dude and the way that mm-hmm. he climbed up, like working with Kobe and stuff. I'm like, man, mm-hmm. this guy knows. It. And yeah. it's really valuable stuff, but I did stuff that I was learning in high school. Mm-hmm. It, was, it, was, mm-hmm. it was dope, man. It was really cool. But that's my rant. Yeah, that's, no, that's dope. Yeah. Adventure that's dope. I agree with you. No, I agree with you 100%, though, bro. It's, it's no point in you showing somebody an in and out, step back, spin move, craziness, you know what I'm saying, if they can't do a left hand layup, right? It's like, what's the why? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's run you through the basics. If you can't do that, let's make sure you master that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree, man. I think it definitely varies on like who you're working with, what level they're at, where they need. And beaches, randomness. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm it's sorry you got hit for a hundred dollars though for nothing, bro. That's right, that hurt my pocket. Oh, bro. <laughs> if I found out you, bro, I'd be working with you, man. That guy was walking bro. all the way to the bank. Man. Bro, I'd have been like half the half the price, bro. I'm like, bro, I need to raise my rate. That's like my wife, bro. We gotta make this work, bro. Bro, I, I, Sabo, my wife was like, so how much is this workout with this Mamba Academy? And I uh, said so it's one fifty. She's like, New Zealand. And I'm like, no, American. And she's like, oh, hell, come on now. Come on. I'm like, it is, it is, it is. And I was like, don't worry, I saved up for it. So I legit got so much merch, man. I got socks, I got t-shirts. Cool. Nice. <laughs> it's just yeah, like, it's yeah. legit. Oh, like yeah. looking around and thinking, yeah. damn. That you oh. must be, the, the inspiration you must have got from just all of these experiences put together sound like, I'm stoked that you got to experience oh, bro. it. It was amazing. Sorry, boys, two six. Oh yeah, two six. What time is it there, Joshua? Oh, it's ten sixteen over here, man. I probably should go. 
<laughs> I probably should go, man. My wife is probably like, dude, what are you doing in the room, man? Is it over with yet? That's so good, man. I appreciate, I, you. I appreciate your time, man. And I'm gonna we're gonna have to keep catching you. Sorry, boys. I'll get a bounce too, it's my bad boys. No worries, man. I appreciate your time, fellas. Thank you very much, brother. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Cheers, Tony. All right, lads. Take care. Peace. Peace out, boys. Bye, right, brother. That'll be me soon. There goes that man. Damn. Damn. Oh.